For a very long time, people thought of pickup trucks as simple utility vehicles meant to lend a helpful hand. But as time passed, consumer preferences and markets transformed as well. In response to this desire, truck manufacturers began producing special edition vehicles with distinctive paint jobs and designs, special badging, performance enhancements, and other fascinating features not usually available in regular trucks. The costs of several of these limited edition pickup trucks are so high that they would make most gearheads want to run away. Let's take a look at 15 extremely rare pickup trucks you never knew existed. 15. Chevrolet 1500 454 SS Pickup trucks used to be sold to individuals who required sturdy vehicles for work-related purposes. Before Chevrolet entered the market with the 1500 454 SS, they were not status symbols and, except for the El Camino SS 396 model, the concept of a sports truck was practically absurd. Chevy sold this half-ton truck as a single-cab variant with a short bed that was entirely chrome-free and had all of the exterior trim either color-matched or blacked out between 1990 and 1993. In addition to adding chrome-dipped wheels and a more aggressive look, Chevrolet installed their largest engine, a 7.4-liter 454 V8, under the hood of this truck and adorned it with SS badges. For the first two years, there was only one color option, Onyx Black. Inside, they were treated to the luxurious Silverado experience, which included luxurious bucket seats with an enormous center console, a top-notch audio system, cruise control, and other modern amenities. 14. Dodge Rampage The first hatchback from an American automaker with a European aesthetic was the 1978 Dodge Omni and Plymouth Horizon Twins, which went on to win honors when they were first introduced. They turned out to be an effective component of the Chrysler comeback of that time, which paved the way for the creation of a wider variety of automobiles, including trucks. In particular, vehicles built with the Omni Horizon. Chrysler debuted the Plymouth Scamp and Dodge Rampage, two new light trucks in 1982. These shared the same front wheel only, transversely mounted four-cylinder engines as the Omni Horizon and were identical from the cab forward. The creation of these vehicles was made incredibly simple by using a front-wheel drive vehicle, since engineers and designers only needed to modify a little portion of the sheet metal to transform a hatchback into a truck. They would not have much payload, but they were ideal for small-scale tasks around town or for homeowners to pick up timber for such jobs. With a 2.2-liter engine producing only 84 horsepower, speed was not too important especially with the available three-speed automatic gearbox. 13. Ford F-150 SVT Lightning First Generation With the introduction of the 454 SS by Chevy in 1990, the sport truck era was officially launched, and Ford was forced to answer with their own unique pickup. Ford didn't have a hit on its hands when the F-150 SVT Lightning finally made its showroom debut in 1993. For the 1993 model year, Ford debuted a new truck in 1992 that helped pave the way for later power trucks like the Ford Raptor and the new Ford Lightning electric vehicle. Designed by special vehicle teams, Ford's performance group also behind the resurgence of the Cobra in the 1990s, the Lightning was based on a normal F-150 single-cab short-bed vehicle powered by a 5.7-liter Windsor V8 engine. After that, the chrome was removed and it was painted a solid shade of black, crimson, or white, with matching trim and accessories. Furthermore, the Lightning wasn't done for show. With 240 horsepower and 315 pound-feet of torque, the V8 engine beneath the hood outperformed the ordinary F-150 model in both power and performance. SVT did this using cast iron heads with larger valves, a tuned intake manifold, exhaust headers flowing into dual pipes, and other performance tweaks. 12. Jeep FC Jeep is currently a part of the massive Stellantis automobile group. Prior to that, it was a division of American Motors, and Willys, the original maker of the World War II Light Army transport vehicle, was the one that produced them before AMC. Willys quickly transformed its Army transport into a civilian model following the war, giving rise to the contemporary Jeep Throughout its existence, Willis produced a few more models, one of which is referred to as the Jeep FC. Forward Control, or FC for short, 
refers to where the steering wheels and pedals are located on the vehicle. It was constructed similarly to those school buses with the engines in the back or cab over big rigs, but the FC's engine was ahead of the passengers below them. Constructed on the identical chassis as the Jeep CJ5, the FC boasted a remarkable turning radius and sufficient hauling capacity, enabling it to do tasks typically performed by larger trucks in a significantly smaller footprint. For eight years, Willis was able to sell it successfully, producing roughly 30,000 vehicles in all. Licensed copies were still being constructed in Spain by Viasa and India by Mahindra even after Willis abandoned it in 1965. 11. Mazda Repu Mazda has been something of a tiny player, behaving more like a brave young upstart with something to prove ever since it first started selling cars in the North American market. This is demonstrated by Mazda's commitment to the engine while others gave up on it. Mazda made rotary engines up until the RX-8's 2012 discontinuation. In 1974, the company went so far as to place it in a small pickup truck that they dubbed the Mazda Repu, or rotary engine pickup. The Mazda Repu was only offered in North America because it was designed exclusively for that market. It was the same basic B-series Mazda truck that was imported along with the Ford Courier, but it had quad-circular taillights under the tailgate and flared fenders that made it look larger and more aggressive. The fact that rotary engines have few moving parts means they can spin at high RPMs, which is when they produce the most power. This is a significant feature concerning rotary engines. Poor fuel economy and a lack of torque power are the trade-offs. It doesn't make sense to have an engine in a car that needed more torque to tow a weight, and the repo didn't either. 10. Lamborghini LM002 In 1977, Lamborghini produced its prototype Cheetah vehicle, which served as the company's first military vehicle. The car was created by Lamborghini with the intention of selling it to businesses involved in the production and exploration of oil. The Chrysler V8 engine was positioned at the back of the first Cheetah prototype. The prototype underwent extensive testing and modifications before receiving a serial number and becoming the first LM002. In 1986, the production model made its debut at the Brussels Auto Show, was dubbed the Rambo Lambo. The full luxury package was given to civilian versions, which included air conditioning, tinted power windows, full leather trim, and a high-end audio housed in a roof console. Lamborghini commissioned Pirelli to design the Pirelli Scorpion tires with unique run-flat tread patterns in order to satisfy the vehicle's tire requirements. These were designed especially for the LM, and there were two types of tread available, one for mixed use and the other for use just in sand. These tires could withstand the heat of the desert, the weight, and the LM speeds, while being driven almost completely flat without posing any risks. A fuel tank measuring 169 liters, 45 US gallons, was installed on the LM0029 Chevrolet Blazer Chalet. The Chevrolet Blazer Chalet was an attempt by Chevrolet to make a hybrid pickup truck. The Chalet was an amalgam of a two-door pickup truck and an RV home. Despite its diminutive size, this cabin had a kitchen and a bed. The chalet is also raised a little to enable it to go over uneven ground. The Blazer Chalet's designers appear to have had the simple goal of creating a four-wheeled home that you could transport to far-off places and use without having to put anything up when you got there. The recreational four-wheel drive market was thriving by the middle of the 1970s. The genre had gained traction from its somewhat obscure beginnings in the 1950s and 1960s, and Americans were purchasing four-wheel drives in large numbers all over the nation. General Motors demonstrated a strong interest in the recreational vehicle industry in the 1970s and attempted several strategies to take advantage of it. The GMC Motorhome and the Chevrolet Blazer Chalet, two radically different RV models made to appeal to both ends of the market, were arguably the two most memorable. While the Motorhome was a spacious, mobile house, the Blazer Chalet provided more basic lodging while still enabling its owners to travel practically anywhere. Like all other Blazers, each Blazer Chalet began life on the assembly line before being transported to Chinook Mobile Lodge Inc.'s facilities to finish the building process. The original passenger cab's back had to be taken out during this build procedure in order to install the fiberglass camper shell back that was supported by a steel frame. 8. Dodge Ramrod Hall Signature Edition 
Baja racing had its share of excitement during the 1980s and 1990s. Thus, in 1990, legendary Carroll Shelby and experienced off-road racer Rod Hall collaborated to construct a series of extremely powerful four-wheel drive pickup trucks. With the use of a unique, high-performance suspension system, the vehicles would be able to handle even the most difficult off-road situations while still offering a respectable highway ride. The Dodge Ram Rod Hall Signature Edition was created in this manner. Even with its extremely stylish appearance, this 4x4 truck appeared to be doomed from the start. The Signature Edition suspension was never put to the test on the road, which is why the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration NHTSA, had to recall the first batch from 1987. As a result, the NHTSA declared that it was hazardous to sell and operate the limited edition pickup on public roads. It goes without saying that this killed production, with only 14 units reaching the market. 7. 1991 Ford Sky Ranger. Carroll Shelby and Dodge collaborated to create the amazing Shelby Dakota pickup truck in 1989. Ford saw this and realized it needed to come out with a competitive vehicle of its own, so in 1991, it created the Sky Ranger. Based on the extended Can Ranger, the Sky Ranger was a pickup truck with a unique design. It featured a drop top. It was a pleasure to drive thanks to its powerful Cologne V6 engine and all-wheel drive setup. The Sky Ranger is awfully clever. Unlike the Dakota's clunky setup, the roof of this extra cab Ranger slides down neatly into the space behind the front seats. Not to mention, the forward slanting Targa surround is a superior design than the Dakota's mousetrap roller bar. It's unclear if it will be adequate to keep the occupants safe in the event of a rollover. With only 20 examples ever built, the Sky Ranger is a unicorn of a pickup truck. 6. Chevrolet Luvi. Early adopters discovered that the adorable tiny mini trucks that Japanese manufacturers were introducing to the American market were sturdy and trustworthy little workhorses. Identifying a market gap, Chevrolet approached its Japanese partner Isuzu to negotiate the importation of their compact truck, which would be sold under the Chevrolet brand. It was referred to as a LUV, or light utility vehicle. In 1972, the launch of the Arab oil embargo and the ensuing spike in fuel costs led to shortages and lengthy lineups at the gas pump. This was precisely the year that the small truck made its debut. Chevrolet sold 39,422 of its new 32 MPG import in 1973, proving that it was in a good position to market the vehicle. Chevrolet shipped them half-assembled and finished them at the port, avoiding the 25% tariff also referred to as the chicken tax. In 1981, sales persisted even after a second generation adopted the era's fashion of fewer curves and less decoration. 5. Jeep Gladiator Alongside the now-famous Wagoneer, Jeep also debuted the Gladiator, a medium-duty pickup truck, as part of the J-Series in 1963. In addition to being spartan but well-prepared for every situation, the Gladiator also has an enormous, menacing, and incredibly cool appearance. Customers couldn't choose the 250-horsepower Vigilante 327-cubic-inch V8 until 1965. The only engine available at first was a 230-cubic-inch Tornado Straight 6 the only overhead cam 6 manufactured in the United States at the time, from Kaiser, Jeep's parent company. More significantly, Jeep truck's reliable four-wheel drive 4WD systems allowed them to go anywhere. Gladiators were not only 4WD, but also had independent front suspension, which was unusual for 4WD cars at the time as most had solid front axles. The United States military embraced the J-Series trucks because of their capacity to navigate any terrain while towing large payloads. Not only did the trucks find employment with government agencies operating in the American wilderness, but they also gained popularity among a large number of users. By 1970, AMC had taken control because the public had grown less enamored with Kaiser and because of inadequate management. 4. GMC Cyclone when the GMC Cyclone made its debut in the early 1990s, gearheads were taken aback. The Cyclone's exterior was mostly similar to that of the Sonoma single-cab pickup truck on which it was based. But what was under the engine revealed why it is regarded as one of the greatest American sleepers ever made. The Cyclone was equipped with an all-wheel drive system with a 4.3-liter turbocharged V6 engine that produced 350 pound-feet of torque 
and 280 horsepower. The Cyclone's 0 to 60 time of little over 5 seconds allowed it to compete with sports cars. Built by GMC and PAS, Production Automotive Services of Troy, Michigan, the GMC Cyclone, Typhoon, and Sonoma GT were distributed through dealerships. The Cyclone was the quickest stock pickup truck in the world when it was first released. Its acceleration was favorably compared to a range of sports vehicles by auto magazines such as the Chevrolet Corvette and, in one particularly noteworthy comparative test, published in Car and Driver magazine, a Ferrari 348 TS. The 4.3-liter LB4 V6 engine in the Cyclone and Typhoon trucks is equipped with a Garrett Water Air Intercooler, a 48mm twin-bore throttle body from the 5.7-liter Chevrolet small-block engine, and hyper-eutectic pistons. 3. Dodge D-Series Dodge sold a lineup of pickup trucks known as the D-Series, or DW-Series, from October 1960 to September 30, 1993. Up until the launch of a newly rebuilt Ram in October 1993, the basic design remained the same. The Plymouth Trail Duster Twins and the Dodge Ram Charger shared the same AD platform as the DW Series. 4x2 vehicles had the designation D and 4x4 models had the designation W. In 1964, Dodge wanted to build the fastest truck possible with the D-Series high performance. The vehicle was outfitted with the most potent engine ever installed in a truck at the time, a 426 wedge V8 engine that produced 375 horsepower. Only 50 D-Series trucks were produced, and they were quite costly. For those drivers who can still locate one for sale, it's an exceptionally rare truck because there are only 31 remaining in the world. In the TV series Emergency, a 1972 Dodge D300 served as Squad 51, the paramedic rescue vehicle of the Los Angeles County Fire Department. The utility body for Emergency was specially constructed by Universal Studios to meet the requirements of the Los Angeles County Fire Department for its paramedic rescue vehicles. It was given to the LA County Fire Department after the show concluded and added to the reserve fleet, where it was periodically used as a paramedic squad. It was then moved to the department's museum, where it underwent a comprehensive restoration in 1999. The diesel engine that took the place of the old engine was the only modification made to the restoration. During the filming of Emergency, three Dodge D-Series cars, a 1971, 1972, and 1973 Dodge D300, were used. With the exception of the grills, the 1972 and 1973 were the same. 2. Lincoln Blackwood Lincoln, Ford's premium division, set out to create the ultimate utility vehicle at the beginning of the new millennium. Their plan was to create a high-end pickup truck that combined the greatest features of the Ford F-150 Supercrew and the Lincoln Navigator. The Lincoln Blackwood was the outcome. Dubbed the ultimate utility vehicle by Ford, the Blackwood was designed to replace the F-Series pickup bed with an enclosed cargo area bodied with black African Wenga wood, adopting a styling element of wood-bodied station wagons. This allowed the vehicle to combine the utility of a truck-based vehicle, like the Navigator or an F-150, with the comfort of a sedan, like the town car. The wood was inlaid with aluminum stripes and sealed with epoxy to protect it from the weather. But what seemed like a brilliant plan at first was a complete failure. Lincoln ultimately succeeded in rendering the Blackwood unfit for use as a pickup truck in an attempt to make it opulent. The Blackwood cost more than $50,000 and was only offered in two-wheel drive, which made issues worse. Not surprisingly, Lincoln produced a mere 3,356 specimens. 1. Dodge Midnight Express Dodge created and produced a distinctive range of specialty pickup trucks in the late 1970s. Collectors from all around the United States still have a strong desire for these limited edition cars. The Dodge Midnight Express, the Dodge Lil Red Express, and the Dodge Warlock are a few of the most well-liked specialized pickup trucks from the third generation of the Dodge DW series. The toughest pickup truck for collectors to obtain is the Midnight Express, followed by the Warlock and Lil Red Express. This is because Dodge produced just 200 Midnight Expresses in 1978 when it was first launched. The Dodge Midnight Express was distinguished from the more well-known Dodge car made in the 1970s, the Dodge Lil Red Express,
by its enormous 440 cubic inch V8 engine. There is just one model year for this pickup truck, the Midnight Express, because Dodge just started producing it in 1978. Furthermore, there are extremely few Midnight Express trucks available because Dodge only produced 200 of these unique pickup trucks. It should come as no surprise that the Midnight Express and the Lil Red Express have a lot in common considering their shared history. The wheels, gold pinstriping and exhaust stacks on both pickup trucks are identical, but there aren't any more parallels between these two Dodge pickup vehicles. Naturally, the main distinction between these two specialty vehicles is that the Midnight Express was painted black with a decal reading Midnight Express truck on the door, while the Little Red Express was painted red. Moreover, the 360 engine featured in most Little Red Express vehicles was replaced by a 440 engine in the majority of 1978 Dodge Midnight Express pickup trucks. Built for Dodge's adult toys range, the Dodge Midnight Express is still a beloved vintage pickup truck.